Hello, welcome to Dazlius, learning the language of autism. Bell here for um, food, location, um, environment, and eating materials. So this is chapter three, part D. <laughs> um, so we've discussed in previous videos the senses and breaking them down, and I hope that they're um, giving you plenty of food for thought and um, giving you some kind of, you know, um, idea of just how sensory stimuli from food can um, create the behaviours and the challenges or the joys for your autistic person in your life. So this, this video is about the environment in which your person is going to eat. So I'm going to start with outside environments, so like restaurants, cafes, school, you know, anywhere else other than your family home or the home in which that person that you care for um, lives and is familiar with. Um, <clears throat> you know, often, um, first thing I'll say is, you know, often an experience for you, um, you know, as a neurotypical person, you may think, oh, it's really exciting going to a restaurant and there's going to be, you know, there's going to be people dressed up as your favourite characters or there's going to be music and there's going to be this, and there's going to be that. It might be exciting to you, but it might be, you know, the total opposite to your autistic person in your life. And, you know, because of when you think about the stuff we've discussed with food and the smell and the taste and the sound and all of that. You imagine if they're in a, in a cafe or a restaurant, they've got all those smells to do with food, which we've already broken down. Plus, they've got the sounds of people um, all cluttered together. They've got the movement of people. They've got the smells of people. They've got the energy of people. They've got all the different colours and all the noises that, you know, coffee machines and, and, and all that make. It's a really sensory, overpowering, can be a nightmare, <laughs> you know. So, it, you know, it doesn't always have to be that way. And I'm not suggesting that it's that way for every single autistic person that walks this earth, obviously. This is all about giving you the possible reasons why um, the person in your life is struggling, um, you know, as well as some of the excitement and the joys that they may have as well. So <clears throat> my notes are here. Um, because restaurants by nature are just so unpredictable. Um, I don't know why my, ca my camera, oh, there you go. I don't know why it goes dark like that, sorry. Um, they're so unpredictable and there's so many rules and expectations when we go out for dinner, you know, you know, like yourself and you'll be sitting there to, you know, if you go out on a one to one and you're having a nice cozy little dinner and then the waiter or waitress comes over and it's an interruption and then they thank you very much and then they'll go away and then three minutes later they come back and you're kind of like, Ugh. so the first sort of 10, 15 minutes of being in a restaurant, you're constantly interrupted by the waiter, waitress doing their job. Um, but to an autistic person, all these questions and expectations, and then you have only have a certain amount of time to answer a question. It's just really, really challenging. And, you know, it's, you just have to try and get that into your head that this might be something I want to do and I really enjoy doing because of this, 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 this and this. But for that autistic person, it could be just the worst thing ever. And it could cause them, you know, behaviours to intensify because they're so stretched and, um, you know, under so much pressure that, um, you know, they could really, really, from a behavioural point of view, to communicate their distress, you know, it could get, it could get, you know, louder, it could get messy. So these are things that we have to consider for our autistic people in our lives um nobody needs to be put under that amount of stress just to go and eat that's my opinion um <clears throat> but 
there's certain things that we can do as neurotypical carers, parents, um, to help our children. And that is, you know, maybe headphones, you know, ear defenders might be enough for your child person to cope with going to a restaurant. It might not be, you know, but it might be something that will help just block out that sound. Um, you know, sometimes wearing a hat, uh, a cap, which so nobody can really see them and nobody's really expecting them to look at anybody in the eye. Um, that can often that can often help um, an autistic person also. And um, even wearing sunglasses for some is something that can be really helpful. And again, these are all things that it's like, oh, you're not supposed to wear a hat in a restaurant. Oh, is it rude to wear sunglasses in a restaurant? Not so much, I don't think. And I think, you know, many people wear hats in restaurants. It's not about social rules for everybody. It's getting our heads around as parents and carers of autistic people that we are the ones that can stand up and be brave and say, this is their need. You know, they need this and um, that's what's happening. And you stand next to them and you, you advocate for them without embarrassment or worrying about what other people think or say because um, you know we, the more we practice this and I know as a parent myself you know in the earlier days I was really worried about what other people were thinking all the time and it got in the way of my parenting to my son who needed me more than anybody else did. Once I got my head around that and I got my brave head on and, and, and then it just become a matter of it's not even about me being brave anymore. This is about me doing the right thing and supporting my child. And by me doing that, I hope that it will show by example and it will help other people that aren't experienced with autism to kind of just accept. So what? It's really no big deal if someone wants to wear a hat in a restaurant. So, um, yeah, so ear defenders hats, sunglasses can be useful. Taking their favourite toy or their favourite thing, whatever it is, even if it's, you know, there's an array of favourite things. I mean, my son went through a stage of just liking a little bit of plastic. Um, he's now got sort of teddies and things that he likes. And again, it doesn't matter about how old they are. And if you think, oh, they can't be seen out with a teddy bear, they're 15. Uh, get over it. <laughs> because they can. And it, it, it just, it just helps them have something familiar with them. So whatever it is that they can take, that they, that gives them, um, security and may help them focus is worth it. In my opinion, you know, sometimes they might need to wear, if they like music and they can listen to music or take their iPad with something on it. Yeah. It may look rude. People might, might tap, people might think, Oh God, you know, look at those parents over there. Um, not controlling their children. They don't know anything about your life. They do not know what it took for your child to get to that restaurant. The fact that they're there and they're sitting there is, you know, a wonderful thing to celebrate. And it's nobody else's business. It's up to you whether you want to educate people on that, you know. Um, sometimes you might, sometimes you won't. But I it just the more you the more you do this and the more you kind of just focus on what your child needs, the easier it become. Trust me. I and mean, then you kind of find a bit of like freedom in it and it feels great. <laughs> sometimes um, you know, they may want to go into a restaurant or they'll be able to cope with going in but don't ask me to eat or drink anything. So you kind of got to, you know, expect that too and let go. And or maybe they might need to take their own food and they might need to take their own juice and their own drink. Um, now, these are things that you can call the restaurant in advance or the cafe and just say, hi, you know, I'm a local member of the community. Um, just really hoping you could help me, you know, try and be really positive and upbeat and um, rather than all like, oh, would it be all right? Just be really kind of confident, but but grateful at the same time and fun and happy. I find that kind of like goes a long way with people um, and just say, oh, you know, we're coming. There's three of us coming and we're all going to be ordering food. Um, you know, my child's autistic and finds it really difficult coming into restaurants and la, 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 la. And we're, you know, we're working our way through this stuff. But, you know, is it OK if they bring their own food? Um 
so that we can come and enjoy your restaurant as a family, stuff like that. Um, most will accommodate you. Um, you know, they won't all do that. But again, the more we ask, the more we put ourselves out there, the more normal it will become. Um, and then you can show your appreciation when you're there. So prep is really good. Taking pictures of the restaurant or the cafe that you're going to go in, the outside of the restaurant and then the inside of the restaurant. Um, is And then kind of like if your child can cope with knowing um, well, we're going to do this and then we're going to do this, if they can cope with the then and now, then um, now and then, like first and, and second, then, you know, maybe to help them know that this restaurant experience is going to end, you can say, oh, when that, give them like a, you know, a timer or as many different cues and um, things that you can give them that will help them know what's, you know, when it's going to happen, why it's happening and when it's going to end and what's going to happen when it ends. And if at any time you are there and you've got your child there and your child is able to cope with being there, if at any time they just start to really get anxious and you pick up on those cues, honour them and just leave. Ask for a doggy bag, get your food and, and leave before it goes into full meltdown because then it's just going to slow down the process of them wanting to go to a restaurant again. If they trust you that you've got their back and that you understand and that you are there to support them, then... You know, you're gonna. It's gonna help you in your long-term relationship for other experiences. So when they're eating, oh, just one other thing is. So obviously, when they're in a restaurant, you know, all the stimming and um, ticking and stuff that they may do, their physical behaviours and verbal ones. You know, don't expect them not to do that when they're in the restaurant. <laughs> you know, it's. Just because they're in a restaurant, they're not going to go, well, I'm not allowed to do that here. They may want to do all the things they do at home. They might need to stand up, sit down. They might need to rock. They might need to clap. They might need to tick. They might need to um, shout. They might need to do all sorts of things to cope with everything that is going on in that very incredibly busy restaurant. Um, so that, you know, you as neurotypical people, carers or parents... You, you really got to get your head around that because if you're going to be worried or embarrassed um, and constantly on edge and saying, oh, could you don't, don't do that, don't do that, it's not going to work, okay? You know, often with our son, um, when I started getting used to this and people were giving me advice and parents of other older autistic kids and were saying, you know, we just started doing their behaviours with them, not because we were mocking our children, no, 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 but because... We were supporting them and, um, you know, we were kind of doing it in a fun way. So we were kind of like, oh, we would say like, oh, I know when you're clapping like that, you just, it just helps you to process the sensory stuff and you just speak it out like nicer now so people can say, can see that you're doing what you're doing or just don't bother and just turn a blind eye to what other people are thinking or saying. Preparation is key. It really helps, especially if you lie with the restaurant or cafe, um, but also letting go of your own expectations and getting your head around the stimming behaviours because they're not just going to stop just because you're in a public place. In fact, they might increase. Um, so when they eat at home, um, you know, environment can be very important. And something I learned about my son was that he doesn't really like eating at school well he doesn't eat at school he eats nothing at school and they've got a you know he's got six kids in his class it's a special school it's amazing and they do he cooks he's, he's, he's a top chef he loves to cook and chop and bake and fry and all of that but he will not eat the food that's been cooked everybody else enjoys the food but he just gets pleasure out of cooking the food i'm hoping that eventually he will get pleasure out of eating food at school as well. But for now, he just enjoys the, the cooking and that's fantastic because he's getting to smell and taste and experience lots of different types of food and he's able to cope with his peers eating near him, which, you know, years ago he just wouldn't have been able to have coped with. So again, remember the process. It's always a process. Um, so it's worth investigating that at school for your child. So if they are having difficulty eating, you know, they might need visual cues. They might need to eat on their own. They might need to eat in a different space. They might 
need to wear their ear defenders. You know, if your child cannot eat and the only way they can eat is on their own, then you need to work with the school and a support worker one to one to make that happen. Um, sometimes it's just making these small changes that can make the biggest difference to your child's experience. You know, something that might be tiny and small to you, like something that's just like a, a blind flapping on a window that's hardly making any noise at all to you, could be the difference between your child feeling at ease and not. Um, you know, when you go in and you speak to the school and you speak to the ladies and officers or, or whoever they are, special needs, SENCOs, whatever you've got in your school child setting, you know, you go in with a plan and you say, this is what we're expecting and this is what we have found helps him or her. And you kind of go in with a positive kind of like, almost like you're expecting them to do it because you kind of are. Um, and they are supposed to be able to accommodate your you know, all children. So it's possible. There are, it's always possible to, to do things. Um, but when you're at home, lots of things I've heard over the years is that a lot of sensitive people, autistic, ADHD, they do not want to eat with their family. This can cause problems. It can cause, um, you know, for the rest of the family and it can cause, you know, again, it's one of those rules that you're brought up with as a parent. It's like, we're all going to eat together. Um, and it's a nice thing to do and all that stuff. But if your child or the, your autistic person in your life is like, it's a nightmare for me and I'm going to lash out and I'm going to throw food and I'm just not going to eat, then as long as you're not sec um, secluding them and isolating them from the family and it's their choice, I would honour that if I was you. And if they want to eat in their room on their own, then it means everybody else, everybody else gets to eat as well in peace and harmony. And especially your child means that they are going to eat and enjoy their food. And eventually, you know, over time, the process, you will find that they will come out of their room and they will eat somewhere different. Maybe not always next to you, but near and around you. I don't think I know of any families and people that I've on social media groups or personal people that I've met in real life and discussed these things with that haven't evolved some way or another from eating on their own to not eating anything to only eating limited food to eating on their own to then eating with peers or at least downstairs in the same vicinity like it does tend to happen it might take 10 15 years it might take two years but it will happen so I've always had the philosophy that if you step into their world first and, and, and have a little like play in there and, and, and feel and go, wow, like now I get it, they might be more willing to step into yours. But if we consistently try and wrench them out of that into this neurotypical way of being, then it's just going to take longer or, or create bigger, 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 bigger issues. Um, first time experiences so another thing that can happen with restaurants and food and stuff if they want to keep if you if you have got a child that does want to go into a restaurant and likes it but they only want to go into a particular restaurant um, that might be because that was the first restaurant you ever took them in just as an example it might not be it might be well that's the restaurant I went in for the very first time and they kind of form an attachment to it because they know where the toilets are now, they know what the smells are, the tastes, they know everything about it. Um, and so then to take them somewhere else may cause big issues. So don't assume that because they've been to one restaurant that they're gonna be okay going to another one. And also, if they are happy to go into different cafes and restaurants and eating places, you know, it's always worth asking and checking that they remember how to use certain things and that they remember the rule, the social, like, you know, if someone asks you what you want, are you okay? Do you want me to assist you? Um, show them where the toilets are. Show them the knives and forks and what to use if they find that difficult. Because something that I learned quite early on, which was a big surprise to me, I mean, it makes sense now, but it didn't when I didn't know anything, was that every individual experience, even if it's the same experience to us, you know, we're already going, we're already going for, some, for something to eat, it's, a, it's a, like a brand new experience for them. It's like they have to start all over again. 
So please have that in mind as well, okay? And always take pictures if you can. Take pictures of the restaurant, pictures of the of the inside and the outside of the restaurant. It can be really, really helpful. Um, yeah. So other utensils and things like that, which can cause um, the difference between your child eating and not, is if they... My, my son still will not use a knife or fork or spoon. He uses his hands. And... Um, they're there, they're there for him to use, but he still prefers to use his hands. And that's okay with me. And, um, you know, the food that he eats isn't like he's trying to eat soup with his fingers or anything. He doesn't like that kind of food. So, again, social rules. I would say if your child likes to eat without using cutlery, honour it. Is, is it? You know, there are plenty of other cultures around the world that eat with their fingers and it's perfectly acceptable and okay. So again, it's just one of those social rules that we think, ah, ah, like, let it go. You have a different type of human being. You have a different person with a different way of processing things and a different way of being, you know. So celebrate that and enjoy that. If your child is into a particular, um, I don't know, like Peppa Pig or... Um, postman Pat or, you know, something like that, something that they really like or Buzz Lightyear or whatever it might be, Barbies or, oh, I don't know, I'm not really up with all the younger stuff these days, but whatever it is that they're into, you know, if you can buy plates and cups and stuff like that that might help them eat their food, or you can buy, like, plates that have got, like, separate sections in them because some autistic people don't like their food to touch so you can put you know three or four different types of things in separate things and that that that's been a real game changer for a lot of families is just by literally putting their food into these separate compartments it just makes everybody happy um and they can it seems that a lot of autistic people that find that a problem for them it really is just like yep done and they just eat away um you know mm, Giving them the space and time to eat um, is really important because everybody eats at their own pace. And now that you've watched, if you've watched all the other videos and if you haven't, you know, you can watch the, the whole um, chapter three of all the food stuff. It gives you a real understanding of just how intense a food eating experience can be. Um visual boards and photo images so some families are using visual bo boards of when food is coming um, within their whole daily timetable so there's no surprises um, these can be really helpful and there's loads of information like that online and if you've got you know or contact your speech and language um, units um, and ask them to assist you and they, are, they can advise you on different pecs and communication aids and different boards that you can use and, and lots of there's loads of support and help out there so it's worth asking and just going online and and asking other families and other autistic people on these facebook groups and forums um what works for them um and how like i, I know i keep saying it in every video but it's really worth asking autistic people for their advice because it's like gold dust it's like the advice that they give is you know it's coming from there perspective which is obviously what we what we want to know there's, there's no point in trying to figure it out from the neurotypical point of view because we're different um yeah so like i've said about being brave you know we're in a neuro neurodiverse world we're, we always have been it's just that you know the autistic world if you like the autistic way of being is just so different to anything else that it seems so unreachable and impossible at the beginning when actually when you delve right in like you delve right in and you break down all these senses and everything and you start to really dissect like with anything you can really start to understand it you know it doesn't mean you're going to understand everything about your child 
person in your life. But you're going to understand a hell of a lot more. And trust me, by showing empathy and compassion, acceptance and honouring them all the way through every aspect of their life um, is so worth it because they do, it's the appreciation, even if um, some are unable to express that gratitude. Um, many adults that I've been in touch with over the years and through social media, you know, they've asked questions, you know, what did your parents do that was good or bad from when they were children? And, you know, they, for those that had it and said, you know, my parents did the best they could, I know they always had my back and they always supported me even if I knew they found it difficult and 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 where they are now as adults it's it's really worth it it really really is and you're not alone there's so many of us there's so many parents of autistic kids and adults that think oh my god I'm you know I'm on my own and I don't know what to do well we're not on our own we're not on our own like their parents were like you know the adults of my age when they were autistic and their parents there wasn't any help then you know we are the lucky ones we've got plenty of online help and autistic people that are willing to educate us and support us and help us um which i am very grateful for okay i hope that's been helpful if there's any other ideas and comments please do comment in the comments boxes send me emails um, all my contact details are in the description box below and um, you can also subscribe to my channel that would be great and then you'll get all my videos directly um, in your inbox which makes life easier for you. Um, next week which is the last chapter the final um, part of chapter three food um, and it's gonna be like a recap just like a quick recap of everything that we've discussed over the last four or five videos to do with food. So um, have a good week and um, share your ideas, keep asking for support and try and enjoy the fact that you can, you know, really support and help your child um, and really get to know them in a positive way. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.